Hi, I'm Simon. I produce the Swarm Intelligence, and I'm here to explain a bit about how I perform. When building my live set, one of the things I drew inspiration from was experiences seeing some of my favourite artists perform. One of the most important things for me there when I saw them play was that I would be able to recognise something, but that this wasn't exactly as I'd heard it, it was something new, maybe something else had been improvised on top of it, it was a bit more exciting and different. And that was something I was really striving to achieve myself in my own live set. So um, in order to do this, the first thing I did was I um, rendered out all of the, the separate parts of my tracks. So um, I rendered out the bass stems and the lead and atmospheric, atmospheric stems together um, and then I broke these into different parts. For example here is the intro of the atmospheres and then the, the middle parts. And you can see the same here for the, for the bass. Do one of the, the main bass parts, break down in between and then I also have all the drums here separately. So when breaking these into, into parts, I try and extract sections of the track. So these would typically be 16 or 32 bars. This gives me some time to improvise on top, whereas not too much time that I stand there waiting for my cue. So all of these loops and patterns make up the, the foundation of the live set. And um, what I haven't mentioned yet is that the drums are all MIDI. So when I open up this track, it's actually a group track and contained inside are two sets of clips. And what these actually are, are one, I call them a, a driving and a deep version of the drums. So um, I can mute and unmute one part um, and these MIDI patterns will be feeding my drum rack. Essentially what I call this is the techno button. So it's easier to just to show it. So say for example, if I trigger these, both of these patterns are playing at the same time. Um, and now I can activate my techno button and turn off the quieter ones and turn on the more techno version. So this basically means programming two patterns for every single corresponding bass and atmospheric part, but it's totally worth it. It's a really great way to interact with the audience and give people what they need at that moment. Another great way of responding to that is just having really fundamental controls at your fingertips whenever you need them. Um, again, with the drums, I always have access to uh, the mutes for various drum parts. If I was to trigger another pattern, activate the techno button, I can quickly mute the hi-hats or take out the kick for a second there and the snare, bring everything back in. So that's the, the main purpose that the launch control serves in the set. Um, it gives me this quick access to these most fundamental controls that I need, the kind of overarching controls that stay the same no matter where I am in, in the, the live set. Over on push, what I, what I do a lot more is the, the more improvised parts of the song. It's a, it's a lot more focused, more, more zoned in. Um, I have two different synths that I use. One is a, more of a lead synth and the other one I use a bit more for pads. And these are quite flexible. I can take them from being kind of more atmospheric sounds to being, to being a lot darker sounding. Um, and this one is kind of a bit more of a pad sound. And again, I can push this back into the background with a bit more reverb. Just make it a noisy thing up on the top. And here it's not so much about um, replicating parts of the song. It's more about uh, jamming and improvising and responding to the moment. So to do this, I limit myself to just having eight controls for each synth. I really know um, what they do and how they will respond when I, when I use them. And similarly over here, I have um, a big drum rack. I usually use the 64 pad layout for this. And this drum rack is the same drum rack that's getting fed by the other MIDI clips. Um, but then I can improvise on top. Um, 
the colours really help here because I know exactly where different sounds are. For example, I know exactly where my different kicks are or my snares. I have different hi-hat sounds here, some effect sounds, and then the different percussive sounds that I can add in on top. Um, and this, this makes it really easy, again, to interact with people, to create build-ups, um, to take out some parts for a second while you improvise some other things on top, bring it all back in. Um, this really gives this um, extra level of control um, that allows you to play with people and build up the night rather than just going through what you've, what you've rehearsed.